Yeah, all right. Welcome to the Tuesday <laughs> show. My name's Ultra David. And I'm James Chen. How's everybody going? We're going to talk about final round results, the tournament, the actually important part, which was Sonic Fox versus Goichi, <laughs> uh, etc. Okay. And we're also going to talk about Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Edition, which we both had a chance to play a little yes. bit of. We're going to talk about Noctis. We're going to talk about Undernight. And whatever else. Yep. I don't know. All sorts of fun. Other stuff. <laughs> yeah, let's start off with the final round. This okay. past weekend. We were That's both there. Right. The start of pretty much the tournament season, final round. Uh, start of the Tekken World Tour, start of the Capcom Pro Tour, right. and just, you know, the first real major, major of the year a lot of times. And the first international major for Dragon Ball. Yes. Like, it really started off a lot of stuff this, yeah, this time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so. Uh, well, before we get into the results and all that stuff, how do you feel about the event? I mean, it's it's it feels like it's kind of a it's getting to a point where I feel like it's becoming a victim of its own history, success, position kind of thing. Because if you remember, two years ago, Street Fighter V had a thousand entrants in there, and that was in the original location that Larry yeah. had always been running the tournament. It was way too small. Everything was late. Right. It wasn't ready for all those entrants and everything. So right. last year. Larry up the ante, got the convention center, a much bigger space, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of people kind of didn't go last year because they were already upset at the previous year. And now this year, it feels like it kind of dropped off a little bit more. I'm not sure what happened because I thought last year went really well. There definitely know? were fewer people. I mean, certainly than two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember how many people last year had, but I feel like there were fewer people this year. Right. Uh -huh. It feels so, like it. It, feels it did like feel it. like it. But, you know, I still think it was it was well run, you know, outside of a few stream gaffes here and there. You know, I know the Sonic Fox Goichi match went, you know, down for a little bit because someone accidentally used the stream key somewhere else. And trust me, I'm I'm, I'm about as upset about it as anyone else. And we'll get into that <laughs> as why. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I don't know. It just feel like it didn't quite have that same scope as it did the previous years. However, I still think... A lot of people need to kind of reevaluate, see if they can go back again. Yeah. Because, um, like I said, I thought it was run really well. Um, yeah, and, and in talking with the players, I talked with people who were there to play, you know, all sorts of different games. And uh, they all had fine things to say about it. Like, it mm -hmm. wasn't, there weren't organizational issues in, in the way that there have been in years past, which is great. And last year was, of course, better than the previous year. So, hopefully, this is like, Finally, that time when Final Run has figured it out, <laughs> and now people can come back and have good expectation that there mm -hmm. will be well-run event. I mean, it's all—it's always been been cool in in a bunch of ways. I have all, I lo always look forward to going there to play yeah. Third Strike against the, uh, <laughs> especially the North Carolina crew, uh, which is not so far away, of course, from Georgia, and uh, you know whoever else wants to show up there as well. Uh, and and it's cool to see people in the southeast because um, there's only a couple of times in the year that I that I get to see mm -hmm. them. So, mm -hmm. what bummed me out is that they weren't there. Right. You know? <laughs> Very few of them were there this time. So I, I hope that that changes for next year because it, it did seem like it was well run. Right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, final round is always it's it's in a good time spot as well. You know, because this is March, gives everyone time to prepare for the current season. Not just the players, but I mean the organizations. You know, get the Capcom Pro Tour and the Tekken World Tour and all that stuff all ready to go. And so, yeah, we had a lot of uh, games going on there. A lot of games for, with yeah. important, uh, you know, uh, ramifications and standings and stuff like that. So definitely. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I thought it was it was fun. I mean, there's certainly is some stuff that I still wish that they would figure out. Um, uh, I think it's great that people can come and commentate, like, whoever can mm -hmm, commentate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On the one hand, that's super cool because that gives practice to local people, which is really important. On the other hand, it'd be nice if there was a little bit more coordination about what's going on on that. Yeah, so. I've heard, I definitely heard some complaints about like pools for Dragon Ball. Right. You know, like obviously the exhibition was Yipes and Steve, which was right. great. Yeah. And the top eight was Steve and, and a Katana Prime, which yeah. I thought was fantastic, by yeah. the way. Um, but uh, like during pools, I heard it, you know, it just was like whoever was jumping on or something like that. So I don't know. I haven't heard it myself, so I don't know. So change the topic. Good call. Thank you, Kay. Yeah, hopefully they get in that. There you go. You know, it's uh, like I said, I do think it's really important to have local commentators, but you can ha you can have a major where like there's that part of it, and just you know maybe have it scheduled or something, like have mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. exactly. not quite as exactly exactly not quite as ad hoc. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm getting some comments in there uh, that in the chat that some people were saying that the pool commentary for Dragon Ball was not right. Great. I have heard the same. So, <laughs> I've heard the same. Uh, not, I mean, obviously, if anyone who did that commentary is watching right now or hear a word of this, like, I mean, again, well, apologies, but you well, know. I don't know about apologies, but you know, it's something that you gotta you gotta work on, mm-hmm. and the way that you work on it is by doing it. That's for sure. Right. But again, just maybe a little bit more coordination. If there's somebody who is doing it for the first time or is, is coming up, probably best to pair them with somebody who does know already what's going on on that front, right, rather than have two people who may not, in any case. Okay. All right, calm down, Curly. <laughs> calm down, Curly. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, you want to talk about the results, or is there anything else to talk about in turn? Can you do that again? <laughs> <laughs> you never heard me do that? I've, I've heard it before, but that time was particularly, okay. there was that real, like, guttural sense to it that uh, was great. So. Well, you know, <laughs> it's part of my heritage. <laughs> All right, we got some results for final round here. Uh, let's see here. Let's do this in backwards order, of course. Sure. Uh, of the way that they were played on Sunday. <laughs> um, Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. Obviously, three hundred and almost 400 players. Yeah. First of the Capcom Pro Tour events. And so needless to say... Like, 300 of the 400 people were, like, serious problems. <laughs> Every pool had minimum of two, three quality players. Mm-hmm. Some had five. Yeah, uh-huh. And and those were known quality players, because we even had right. guys like Milo Mads almost take out Sako. For sure. We had Muso almost take out Daigo. You know, there was people all over the place causing some some problems yeah, around there. definitely, so. man. Definitely. Yeah, yeah that's right. Daigo almost lost to Musa. That was super good, though. Yeah, uh, the Nash Guile fight right there. Very, in very fact, cool. apparently he dropped. You, I think you told me he dropped a combo in game one that would have won him that game. Uh, right? Not outright won it, oh, but okay, okay. if he had hit that super, then he was like one hit away. From oh, gotcha, the round. gotcha. But instead, he dropped the super and he got punished for it. So uh, it was just like the complete. Right, right, right. Okay, you know, okay, so. okay. Musa and Milo are both ATL. Cool, man. Yeah, uh huh. Absolutely. They were all getting cheered for, just like Neon as well, who did make top yeah. eight. Spoilers! Um, oh, boy. Top, yeah, Neon got top eight. and. Uh... <laughs> well, let's get to that. Sure. Uh, do you want me to do top 16 or just do yeah, top eight? Yeah, go for it. So, top 16 here was, uh, in 13th place, was. Yeah. <laughs> Red Bull Snake Eyes uh, with Abigail, Razor Cien with Ibuki, Ponos Moke with Rashid, Oil King with Rashid. So there's going to be a lot of Rashids here. Okay. Right? So ninth place, Fox Momochi with Colleen, uh, Cyclops Dogura with Yurian, GGP Kazunoko with Kami, and Cool Kid 93 with Abigail. Uh, BXA cool kid, I should say. Uh, seventh place was Data Neon, as I said, the, the hometown hero who made it furthest, as well as FD Fujimura with the Buki, of course, aka Yukadon. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say that for like the first couple of months, yeah. and then we'll we'll get past it. So fifth place, Liquid Nemo with Yurian, and no longer Liquid Knuckle Dew with Ooh. Guile. Fourth place, Gachikun with Rashid. Third place, Furson Verloren with Kami. Second place, Echo Fox Tokido with Akuma. And first place. Panda Globals. Panda Global Infiltration. The reveal. With Monotony Jury. Well done to that reveal, by the way. Uh, you know what's so funny is he, he so he was, uh, he got up onto the grand final, the uh, top eight stage uh-huh. with like a monster t shirt on. And then he, he got up just before the match was started. Uh-huh. He already checked buttons. Just before it started, he got up and he uh, looked at the crowd and he took off the shirt. And then he looked around for the, where the cameras were. <laughs> <laughs> and I could, I could see him, like, trying to, like, pose to, like, okay, where is it? Like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Oh, uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, shout out to Panel Global. That is a, uh, That's a huge as big a pickup yeah. as there could possibly be, mm, honestly. Absolutely. But um, that's two in a row for infiltration. For infiltration. Yeah. Evo Japan final round. I mean, like, that's two big ones to take right in a row with Monat mostly. Right. Um, and even after the tournament, I saw him, and I was like, hey, Infiltration, are you back yet? And he was like, not yet. Wow. Said, not he has yet. lofty, lofty expectations. <laughs> so, still not back yet. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? Well, definitely he's back. <laughs> <laughs> like, is he waiting until he wins EVO or Capcom Cup or I something? I guess. I don't know. He's pretty clearly back. Uh yeah, he looks he looks awesome, and Minat is such a good character for him. <laughs> so she's good. she's yeah. a strong character, mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm, obviously. Mm-hmm. But... Her weakness is made up by his biggest strength. Like, he has fantastic evasive maneuver, mm-hmm. uh, moving, 
and an excellent defense. Like those are his two, in my my view, biggest strengths. So he makes up for that character's weakness, and at the same time, he's excellent at using her, you know, good zoning and offense mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. execution requirements are fine and all that stuff. So I feel like he's almost the perfect person to be playing that character. Yeah, I mean, because even when Nash, he wasn't really trying to play Street Fighter Five as much as everyone. It was a lot of fireball zoning, get you to make mistakes. I feel yeah, like Monot, moving around constantly. Yeah, Monot really takes advantage. It's of like that, the same so. thing, man. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's very very well. Done. It's so weird how season one Nash and Monot. Season three could be similar, but they really are. I think so. Like yeah. at the co- like on paper, you look at them; they don't feel similar. But when you actually see what they're doing, and especially yeah. how Infiltration uses them, general game plan. Yes, I think is pretty similar. Uh-huh. Very yeah, similar. Yes, yes. Uh, good job to Tokido again up there. Whenever there's been a big, big tournament, he's mm. been in the top eight minimum. Yeah, grand and, finals I mean, really for almost all the important ones. This was. Uh, he just got second place recently in something else, didn't he? Or I can't remember now. Maybe Capcom Cup is what I'm thinking of. Yeah. In any case, um, I'm super stoked to see this kind of rivalry back. Because mm. season one started that way. First half of the year, it was like Tokido Infiltration, Tokido Infiltration. Yeah, that's right. They were doing the storyline, and then after that, they both just kind of fizzled a little that's bit. That's right. But uh, Tokido made it back, obviously, much quicker. Uh, infiltration, you know, not quite back yet, but he's back definitely and it's cool i'm glad to see that this rivalry is continuing and glad to see that tokido is having this consistency as well because one of the popular narratives of street fighter 5 is that it's random it's too confusing you can't be consistent with it but to see tokido continually doing this with a character who everyone says is good but obviously is not the one that everyone's crying about you know not the few characters that everyone's crying about i think that's a great sign he also continues to be almost the only person doing that with Akuma. Right. Other people are pretty good with Akuma, for sure. Mm-hmm. But if you look at, you know, top 16, he's the only Akuma. And he's he's pretty typically the only Akuma in top 16. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Obviously a good character, but he's the only one making it work like yeah. that. So. Uh, Verloren, I know you're high on. He yeah. continues to be good. Uh-huh. I'm super excited for Verloren. I, I, I picked him to be a surprise winner of final round, the Dark Horse, last year yeah, at right. final round. He made top eight, so I was like, eh, look at me. <laughs> yeah, but um, this year, he got even further. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I guess I was just one year too early. You hey. know, so, but Maybe I, two years too early. Too early yeah, I know, well. right? Because, I mean, to be fair, I, I really do think Cammy is better in this game. Uh, not just in season three in season three yeah largely because of the low jab throw that's a small thing but i think also because everybody else got normalized to cami so right. she never had true throw loops right and now everybody is kind of in that position except for the three or four rare exceptions yeah. right but for the most part everyone got kind of lowered down to where she is and so i think some of the ways that you could kill Cammy before with the standard, like once you started getting into the throw loops, her 900 health was a real big problem because she couldn't take as many throws, et cetera, and she could die a lot faster. Sure, everybody died the same way, but because of the lower health, it was a problem for Mm. her. Now that's not gonna be as big of a problem in my opinion, and so I just think overall she got stronger. I hear you. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. Gachkin still doing well. Uh, I guess he hasn't been picked up by, by a team. That's probably coming soon, I guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, Nemo is still pretty good at fighting games. I mean, it was almost kind of... So do. Like, it was kind of scary because he got sent to losers kind of early and everyone's like, see, this is what happens when you put a jersey on it Dang. instead of, like, the, the nice dress shirts and yeah. stuff, so... <laughs> uh, that, that's really cool and yeah. very, very cool to see Knuckle do up there as well. Also consistent for him. Uh, Fujimura, Yukadon won a couple of majors last year. Mm-hmm. No big surprise he makes top eight here, but very, very cool to see Neon in yeah, seventh place. That's yeah. awesome. He's Second been, highest U.S. player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fifth and seventh are where we ended up. He's been pretty good, but uh, this is, you know, top eight of final round is mm-hmm. uh, pretty impressive. It's interesting because I still remember both of them doing super well at Red Bull Battlegrounds. That is Neon and Nephew, the uh-huh. two Colleen players. They did really good at Red Bull Battlegrounds, and now Nephew has just recently won Winter Brawl and Neon's top eight at the sm- one of the most stacked tournaments ever. Yeah. In fact... Uh, I think it was uh, One Frame Link or SRK Ranking. One of those guys listed, and I think it was SRK Rankings, who showed that this might have been, in terms of seeding on SRK Rankings, one of the most stacked tournaments of all time. Because Dang. like he was like literally like... 40 some of the top 50 players were there. Like it was yeah. really stacked. Yeah. Wow. Really, really stacked. Okay. So. Well, that's the top eight, and then Momochi just outside of it, Dogura, same, Kazunoko the same, not big surprises. 
Uh, but I'm really happy that Cool Kid gets ninth. Yeah. That is awesome. And and to do that, he beat just like an incredible list. I don't remember <laughs> it all offhand, but he he double jeopardy uh, Luffy. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. He beat. Uh, he beat a t- look. I don't just remember, go find Kami's tweet. Yeah. Kami's tweet. He was like, Abigail. These guys lost to Abigail and listed a bunch of names yeah. and like. Six out of ten of them were cool kids. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I Uh, mean, I don't want to see the list of people who lost to Cami in this tournament. Let's just put it that way. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Very awesome for Cool Kid. Uh, He's a really good player, and I hope that that continues to improve for him. Snake Eyes also did pretty good work with Abigail, but there's no Abigail in the top eight. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And and some people in the chat are asking about Punk. He tied for 17th place. But, I mean... That's also with Fudo and Goichi and Phenom and Human Bomb and Punko and apparently Game Review versus Oil King, <laughs> according to my list here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but Itabashi at 25th, MOV at 25th. Right, it was, it was stacked. It was a hard tournament. Yeah, Storm Kubo. At, so Itabashi, Storm Kubo, two of the strongest Abigails tied yeah. for 25th. Yeah. So there you go. No, so. I, look, Abigail... Everybody's talking about him. He's very good, of course, but he's not some free and easy kind of character. He's, I feel like he's going to get pretty tough to play. Like, not yeah. not super tough, but in the same way that people eventually learn how to play against any, any matchup. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, had, he had stuff that was, like, real nuts in, <laughs> in the Street Fighter context. So when you first see him, you think, wow, I can't believe he has that damage and mm-hmm. guard crushes or whatever. Uh, armor and whatever. Armor. But as you see more and more people play against him, they they begin to figure it out. And, mm-hmm. and we definitely saw that this weekend. Like We definitely saw people play against Abigail and know exactly what's up. Like, I always remember, I think it was at uh, San Cal standoff, I was like, I really want to see Alex Myers play Cammy against Ab- I want to see how he handles that matchup because I think it's a terrible matchup, right? Verloren smoked Storm Kubo. Like, he just 3 owed him in, like, the fastest man of, you know manner possible so it's definitely possible to beat this character you just yeah. really have to study it i yeah. need to go back and watch and see exactly what he did yeah. and and steal it and it's probably just you know be as good as verlord <laughs> which is <laughs> part of it i'm sure yeah. yeah no so it was i thought it was a really good tournament there was a lot of cool stuff yeah. and and also just before we end up stop talking about street fighter i love the grand Watch it again. Yes. Uh, oh, uh, you do. You watch it again. Watch huh? it again. Okay. Yeah, because okay. so James and I were sitting, sitting like kind of off to the side, and we were maybe like twenty feet away from the players monitor, uh, monitor and that's what we were looking at. So uh, not the best like vantage. You point. couldn't even see Mana orbs. Yeah, we didn't know Beatrix <laughs> was still on or whatever. Uh, so I went back and watched it. Uh, man, that was such a good, good set. Yeah. Just like awesome fundamentals, spacing, the movement from both players was really, really good. Uh, they, I, it was, I loved it. it was right. Great. I feel like you know a lot of people one have started complaining about Manat, you know, like oh this character is so boring, it's cheap or whatever like that. I mean honestly, player, she's the least played character in Street Fighter Five on ZFN right now for a reason because she is, I in my boring. opinion, one of the hardest characters to use. Yeah, yeah you she, know she yeah. really is. Like you're gonna be like, look at all these zoning buttons. You hit them and the opponent jumps and you're like, I'm dead. <laughs> what <laughs> right, happened? Yeah. You know, yeah, like you know, that's awesome life. Right, exactly, exactly. And a lot of people don't realize right. that that's how it is when you. Play. It's it's the injustice syndrome all over again, right? Like you're watching Justice, you're like, look at this stupid zoning. Look at Sonic Five. You try it. Like it's not that easy. It's like you watch this Harlequin like do crazy zoning. You're like, I'll play her and just shoot guns all over the place. You try it, and you die. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, it's not as easy as it looks, you know, so. But I really enjoyed it. Uh, one thing I want to ask you, though, is yeah. that, so last year, obviously, there was a season 2.5 patch, and mm. Capcom seemed to wait a little bit for initial, you know, feedback on what was going on. Do you think there's going to be a 3.5 patch this year? Um, I guess if I had to bet on it, I would bet yes. Yeah, okay. And Do you? I... I'm kind of hoping there is, but I'm also afraid there is because, okay. like, I'm afraid they they might nerf Abigail too much. Yeah. Now, granted, last year they didn't really kill anybody in the yeah, in, in the mid season patch. Yurian got a few nerfs here and Slight, there, but yeah. yeah, they weren't significant. Uh, hopefully, they don't go overboard with Abigail. But the only reason why I hope they do is because I hope they do tone back Abigail just slightly because I've said this all year long already. I just don't want guys like Jan and Storm Kubo and Itabashi and Cool Kid to get a, like, oh, you're only winning because you're using these characters, which is a lot of people are going to end up doing, you know? Yeah, no, it's whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, every game has the top tier. It's yeah, fine. yeah. 
Okay. I just don't know. Well, I do know. I guess people don't like losing to grapplers. But yeah, that's another one too. That's part that's of it for sure. Because because yeah. I I think that Guile and Rashid and maybe Cammy are all better than him. Yeah, uh-huh. maybe, I, I don't know about Cammy, but like maybe. But he's probably he's top five. But like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I don't think he's the best character in the game. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, most people we'll are still see. pointing to Rashid. Yeah, everyone that I've talked to has still said Rashid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I honestly think that. Uh, Dude, I can't. You know, I, if I had to pick a top three, I couldn't do it. Okay, because it's, not it's, easy. T- it's a top four. It's a top four to me, right? Oh yeah, now. was so, it the four I mentioned? Yeah, uh-huh. okay. Gal Rashid, Cammy, right. and Abigail. So that's okay. That's for me, so. Oh, that's Street Fighter for now. Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah. Tekken Seven. Tekken Seven. Uh, top seven in this one. Again, this is the first one of the Tekken World Tour. Yeah. Um, kind of uh, interesting situation really was dominated by the Korean players. There was basically six Koreans in top eight. And um, so if you actually look, seventh place was ITS Lil Majin Woo! with King. Let's go with Lil Majin. Seventh place was Fursun Lohai with Shaheen. Fifth place, Kokoma with Dragunov and Kazumi. Fifth place, RB Anakin, highest playing U.S. player. All right. Highest, highest placing U.S. players. Very similar to Street Fighter, if you look. Yeah. Yeah, fifth and seventh, right? So, Jack Seven. Fourth place, ROX Dragon, ITS Chanel with Elisa and Geese. Third place, Fox Saint. Woo! Echo Fox Saint with Jack Seven. Second place, Echo Fox JDCR with Dragonov. And first place, speaking of welcome back is ROX Dragon Knee with yeah. Devil Jin and Paul. So that was cool. Knee, who was a player who just kind of came back partway through last season. Seems like he's really fully back and, f- and and he's in the mix of it again. He was able to beat Saint and JDCR in this tournament. So, interesting start to the Tekken World Tour. Yeah, that's very cool. That's very cool. And in, in talking with uh, people who did commentary for Tekken, in the pools, they said that the, that pools were like as stacked as we're talking about for mm-hmm, Street Fighter. Mm-hmm, they said mm-hmm. like pools are crazy, like right. constantly. There was cool stuff happening. Right. So. And yeah, I mean, again, this is you know, as much as people want to see consistency in games, like consistency also kind of breeds complacency a little bit mm-hmm. sometimes. When it's just like, here comes JDCR is going to win another right. tournament. So you know, to have this kind of thrown into the mix, to have knee right there, you know, in on the in the in the mix of things. I mean, the surprising stuff, I, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, John Ding didn't even finish top right. eight. So ninth. UIU John Ding only got ninth place right there. So, um, But again, as you mentioned, I mean, look at the rest of the guys. Jackie Tran, Fergus, LJR in ninth place, Spiro Jin, uh, Joey Fury, Speed Kicks in 13th place. Yeah. So very stacked tournament. So no shock that any one of these guys didn't make top eight. Let's just put it that way. So, so it's always cool watching Tekken at final round because Atlanta is traditionally such a, a good... Tekken City. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. it was cool. All right. Anything else to say there? Uh, nope. Let's, uh, I, you know what? I haven't actually watched the top eight fully. Oh. Uh, I, I will probably go back and do that at some point in time, just watching it. Yeah. I'll watch it on stream with other people. I probably won't do commentary with it, but I'll just watch it. Cool, so. man. Okay. Um, Dragon Ball Fighters. Ooh, big one here. Yeah. Big one. Yeah. And um, so... Actually, I'll, I'll read off the top eight, and then I'll point out something that someone else tweeted to me about, which I thought was the super coolest thing mm, ever. Okay. Uh, seventh place was Echo Fox Momochi yeah. with, with Grohan A16 and Goku Black. Seventh place, also Ponos Moke with Cell Trunks and Vegeta. And apparently, Momochi's been cracking out on this game. Yeah, someone I talked t- with, uh, with Boken from Echo uh-huh. Fox, the manager. And he said that uh, Momochi has been indeed cracking out on it, <laughs> uh, even more so than in Street Fighter. Yeah, uh-huh. And and also that uh, the way he plays this game is very Street Fighter inspired. <laughs> he, he apparently opened up. He was just doing like frame traps. He wasn't doing like crazy high low makeup right, or whatever. Uh-huh. Just like frame traps. Like he would like walk back and like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, nobody puts Momochi into a fighting game better than Momochi does. Oh yeah, dude. Because yeah. we said that about Ken for years. He's yeah. still putting Street Fighter Four into Street. Street Fighter Five. I feel know, like he's putting Third Strike in that game. Yeah, 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 exactly. Sure, yeah. Momochi just he put Third keeps Strike Momochi. in SF Four. He put Third Strike in SF Five. Yeah. Now he's putting Third Strike in Dragon Ball. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, fifth place, Nakio with Kid Buu, Goku, and Grohan, and Chris G, E G N Y Chris G with Trunks, Android Eighteen, and Vegeta. Fourth place, GGP Kazunoko with Grohan, Goku Black, and Vegeta. Third place, C A G Dogura. 
with Kid Buu, Cell, and Vegeta. And of course, Dogura famously knocked his teammate Goichi in the loser's bracket. That was also hilarious. Uh, well, you fi- finished <laughs> Okay, the okay. Here. And uh, second place, Echo Fox, Sonic Fox, with Goku Black hit an android. And of course, C-A-G, G- Goichi, with Grohan, Cell, and Vegeta. So when Dogura beat Goichi in Winner's Side of Top 8, uh-huh. As they were walking back down to the stage, I, I was down to the seats. I was sitting near where they were seated, and uh-huh. Boken was also there. He's not just Echo Fox uh-huh. manager; he's also translator, so he speaks right. Japanese. Uh-huh. And he overheard them talking, uh-huh. and uh, Dogra was ripping on Goichi like, like, oh, hey, you feel salty? Huh? <laughs> That's awesome. It was so funny. That's awesome, dude. Okay, yeah. okay. Because like, I can definitely see him yapping at Goichi, and Goichi right, was just yeah, like yeah. trying to sit there, you know, like, <laughs> in his seat. <laughs> I can definitely see it. See, what's cool about that is like you don't imagine the Japanese players doing that, right? Yeah. But then when you find out that they're actually doing, that's actually awesome, yeah, dude. Yeah, that was, oh, that that's was really so good. Funny. Well, Goichi got his revenge against right. Dogura in loser's bracket, and Indeed. then uh, he ended up beating Sonic Fox two sets. It looked like a wash at first after the exhibition. It looked like just, you know, Goichi had all the reads. He went 3-0 in the first set. But then it turned out to be 3-2 in the second set. Although he went up 2-0, and then Sonic Fox came back two in a row, but then Goichi was able to finish it out. Right, so. yeah. Um, we'll talk about the exhibition in a little bit, too, but uh, definitely seems like Goichi is the best. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, but you know what the interesting tidbit, the trivia that someone else pointed out to me was that the entire top eight is made out of former Evo top eight finishers of all sorts of different oh, games. Yeah, that makes total sense. Right? Yeah. But the, the cool part is that they're all from different games, right? right like okay. Sonic Fox is the NRS guy, Goichi, you know, everything but Street Fighter mainly, and, and probably some of the, the, the Air Dasher games as well. But for sure, Dogura. I'm not sure if you did it at Evo. But, oh yeah, that's actually uh, true. Dogra definitely Blaze yeah. Blue, Kazunoko, Nakiel has done it before. Chris yeah. G and Marvel, yeah. Momochi and Street Fighter, Moke and Street Fighter. So it's just it is it is the melting pot. Yeah, right now this M- is Moke the... having done well at SBO in um, uh, Persona, I think. Oh, is was where... it? Okay, okay, um, okay. And yeah, Kazunoko Gear, Nakiel also Blaze Blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of different stuff out there. I think that's super cool. Yeah, it's it, it really is uh, it really is bringing scenes together. And then if you go down a little bit. Further, you know, Abigan, the Kill Sage, Fame, uh, Flux is down there. Yeah. Mike and I, Glossal, Gar- Ga- Galileo, another top eight. Uh, well, actually, Dang, didn't I, didn't know, I didn't even notice that Mike and Ike made it that far. Yeah, that's Ragnarok. awesome. That's actually. cool. Uh, I know, I know, Gross made it really far. The the, the NRS, NRS player. player. Right. So yeah, dude, there's the people from all sorts of different scenes are playing this game. I awesome. think that's super cool. <laughs> I think yeah. that's super cool. Yeah. Oh no, I I, I love it. Um, it was uh it was cool to see uh Chris G sorry uh Mo- Momochi play his style. Uh, it obviously didn't work out. He got busted by Chris, but uh, mm-hmm. I, th- I think that's kind of cool to see him like trying to yeah. make that work. Uh Sonic Fox had some sick comebacks, although mostly got steamed. Uh yeah, that was a good top 8. I mean, yeah. it was really fun to watch. I really I liked mean, time the grand it. finals was probably one of the better grand finals I've seen in a while. It looked like it was going bad, right. but the, but you know, again, it's the storyline of watching that exhibition and then seeing Sonic Fox really start to kind of counter adapt and really get up there again. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, dude. I just want to make sure I did have that right that he went up 2-0 in the end, but oh, they don't have the actual uh, round data here. Okay. Well, and the exhibition also occurred on Friday night. Mhm. Mhm. Uh, which was huge, of course. Uh, that's what I was like mostly even looking forward to <laughs> the weekend. Uh, Goichi won ten to four. Um, at the start, Sonic Fox went up two to zero, and then he was tied three to three at one point, mm-hmm. and then it was basically the Goichi show <laughs> after that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you think about it, Sonic Fox went up two zero, and then afterwards lost ten to two. Like that's that's, 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 that's the really how you want to look at it a little bit. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because as as it went on, Goichi's defense just tightened up more and more. Uh, you know, it was it's always good, but you could see it like just tightening, tightening, tightening. Right. He started teching every single dragon rush. He started jumping out of like like he was jumping out of Goku Black command grabs. Yeah, and hit command grabs too, or unblockables, like, right? Well, whatever. But uh, like Go- Goku Black's beam or. Command grab has very similar startup, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so you're just making the call. You're not like reacting to it, mm-hmm. and he like very. He just <laughs> always did. It was wild. His defense was amazing. Yeah. But I, I also felt that as it went on, and in the grand final set too, that the not just was Goichi playing better, but he also definitely had a better team. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I felt yeah. like that was, that became pretty clear. Well, I mean, after the tournament, Sonic Fox is, I'm learning adult Gohan, right. uh, or Go, adult Gohan now. Right. So he's just like, I'm just learning this character. Uh, he also said today on Twitter that he's thinking about picking Beerus back up. It's a character he really likes, mm. but didn't think he could make work, which is also my conclusion, and also Ali Yoon's conclusion. <laughs> like, we all think he's super cool, but just I don't know how to make him work. Right. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what he can get out of that. Yeah. But I, I don't know which of his characters he would drop for mm-hmm. adult Gohan. I can't imagine he would drop 16. I think Goku Black was actually the weak link on his yeah. team, to be honest with you. So, I mean, I mean, it's it's interesting because last week I said that I believe that Goichi is the one that has more pressure going into this, and you could kind of see that as it started because Sonic Fox was loose, he was laughing, yeah. and Goichi yeah. was just like, <sighs> especially when when Sonic Fox was up two zero. Yeah, uh-huh, oh yeah, uh-huh. he was having a blast. For Honestly, sure. if Goichi had won game one, I think it might have been ten one. You know, because I just think Goichi was nervous at first. Mm. But then as soon as he started winning, you started seeing the smiles from Goichi right. and then Goichi doing this. Right. Thing, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> like he started gaining the confidence back. And honestly, I think one of the things that Sonic Fox, the reason why he jumped out to that lead, though, was that he kind of did. And this is weird. I'm not saying that this is something that he messed up on because Sonic Fox is obviously one of the greatest of all time. And who who am I to give him advice? Or anything? so I'll get into this a little bit. But I just watched the first to ten, like literally before this show. Oh, cool. So I actually got to sit down and see it because I didn't really get to see it at the time. I'll get into that in a little bit. But um, uh, Sonic Fox used all of his tricks really early on in the first. So like ah. he would do air dash with uh, hit and do light, medium, heavy. The heavy would reset, and then he would immediately go into command throw. Uh-huh. He landed that the first two times, and then he never landed that again. But he, he did that That's trick. It. He did a lot of the dash-up dragon rushes. He, he showed all of his cards, I felt like, a little bit too quickly. And to Sonic Fox's credit, everybody else melts under that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everyone else forgets. But even after, you know, knowing what you told me, that Goichi started jumping away from hits, command grab, and all that stuff like that, I was thinking about it, and I could see him set it up the next time. And then Goichi would air block the three air dash moves a lot of the times. He kept using a lot of the same mix-ups, yeah. and Goichi kept blocking them that way. So I think it's just he might have ran out of mix-ups. Yeah, I do think that's part of it. Um, to me, the weakest link on his team is Hit. Uh, I play the same team, but in 16 in front, Goku Black in the back. That's right. Yeah. Black uh, has a good assist. Yeah, that's and true. So, that's so true. Sonic Fox starts him in front, so you don't see that as often. But when Hit wants to approach or when 16 wants to approach, having a beam is really handy. Right. And it's really handy for okay. continuing combos, too. Whereas Hit, uh, although I think he's super fun, I man, I really think Goichi exposed him as a character. Like, against everybody else, Hit will snipe with the tracking shot uh, into, into damage. Or, or he'll do, like, wild cross-up on the ground or whatever it is, mm-hmm. or command grab and full screen, whatever. None of that stuff worked on Goichi. Yeah. Like, at, like none of it. Like, mm-hmm. the only times he ever got a hit is when he was just doing, like, basic, like, air dash jump into overhead overhead or overhead, you know, <laughs> grab or whatever. Like, it, right. he doesn't even have a low in the same Right, he can't even do jump into low and yeah, stuff yeah, exactly. like that. So, so uh, I, think that, I think that was a big issue. Interesting, sure. interesting. No, that makes sense. And, and honestly... It was very apparent that Android 16 was doing all the work. It's 16 for sure. And even in the in the grand finals, his comebacks, he made all the comebacks with Android 16. Sure. That's so, why I think he should just start that guy. Like, just <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Can you imagine if he just started Android 16 with the two assists? That's what like, I think. Right that's from the I mean, that's so. what I've been doing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I think Black is is a better character to pick. But I wouldn't be surprised if he just like dumps both of them and plays 16 mm-hmm. adult Gohan, whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, honestly, I mean, I was talking to Sonic Fox afterwards. You know that guy. He doesn't get particularly salty, even though on Twitter he yeah. was like, usually I get over this, but, like, I'm really frustrated right now. You know, yeah. I'm so close. Like, but not salty, really. It's not. Yeah. Like, it's, it's more like, I, I, think, I think it's like, I can't believe somebody beat me. I yeah. Uh, I, I think that, like, I, like it's, it's, not, it's not like saltiness. It's like, right. m- what? Yeah, it's, it's just like confusion. Yeah, Sonic like Fox, it upends his worldview. He literally <laughs> tweeted, he was like, I'm so mad that I lost after getting so close, right? And I was like, it's the first time for everything, Sonic Fox. Right, right. Because <laughs> exactly. he might have never felt this before. I mean, like literally almost never. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. So. But, you know, talking to him afterwards... Again, I was just like, I was like, well, you're still undisputed second best person on the planet, possibly. Uh, so I was like, 
and now you have someone to chase, and I think that's good. I yeah. think that yeah, fuels I think him, and that'll too. make him better in the end For as sure. well. But definitely so. Goichi is the best right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All righty. Okay, so that was Dragon Ball. Let's talk about some Guilty Gear. Uh, seventh place was TSD Tenpai. Tenpai with Dizzy. Data He May Cut with Leo Whitefang. Fifth place was Abigan with Potemkin and UIU Beautiful Dude with Zatoichi. For fourth place, The Arm with Ramlethal. Third place, TGQ Zen Zen Kai Kisk. Second place, GGP yeah. Kazunoko with Raven. First place, Wong Nation, PAG, Lost Soul, Elfelt. Yeah. Coming from loser's bracket. Oh, sick, okay. Yeah, coming from loser's bracket, had to reset it against Kazunoko, and he won it. Uh, I ended up having lunch, dinner, whatever, four o'clock meals count as, uh, with like Justin Wong and a bunch of guys, and he was just like so happy. He was he was cheesy. Oh yeah, he was cheesy. He was oh, like, I'm yeah, sure. My soul came back. It was so sick. And it was, That's awesome. Yeah, it's another top eight that I need to sit down and watch because uh-huh, sure. I want to see what uh, Lossel did on that one. So congrats to him. That's super cool. Yeah, good stuff to to Lossel. Um, Marvel versus Capcom Infinite here. Uh, seventh place, TNS Ronan Healy. With power and uh, power Sigma Ultron, Space Sigma ne- Nemesis, as well as G O L Ramasama with right. Space Hagger and Dormammu. Uh, fifth place, N B A D C Static Alpha with Soul Strider Hear You Winter Soldier and Soul Strider Hear You Dante. Fifth place was T L T Tayson with Space Gamora Ultron. Fourth place, Not Enough Damage Space Ultron Doctor Strange. He was their hometown hero at that time. Third place, Noel B. Hungry, playing out of his mind. He made it into top eight on win. I think he made it into winner's finals. Yeah, he's actually. been doing really well lately, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, he, said, he said, like, everything felt slow to him that weekend. Ooh. Like, everything, he, he just see everything. That's a good it was one. really weird. But Space Rocket Raccoon Gamora, of course. Second place, EGNY Chris G with Space Morrigan Monster Hunter and Space Winter Soldier Monster Hunter. So he actually used a non Morrigan team at right, some point. Right, okay. But first place, NBADC Dual Kevin. Yeah. With Space, Dante, and Hawkeye, including a 3 0 in Grand Final. I, I was so. just going to say, I feel like he's the best. Yeah. Like he's, he's been the best, and he probably is the best. Yeah. Uh, he's, he just looks so good. His, his screen control is amazing. His movement is amazing. He's just an uh, excellent, excellent player. Right. So Christie actually did reset the bracket 3 to 1 in Grand Finals, but then Dual Kevin took the last set 3 to 0, oh, and the last one was on like. Some ridiculous levels of chip damage. Dang, okay. <laughs> he had like this much left, Morgan, and he did the up super with Uah, with Hawkeye, and all yeah. the arrows fell on him, and he just died. Wow, really? <laughs> he just okay. exploded, and even Chris G looked at him and was like, what the hell yeah, happened? Yeah, chip so, is not yeah. typically that big yeah, in that game, uh-huh, so. uh-huh. interesting. Okay. But yeah, I mean, that, God, I gotta go back and watch all these top eights because, like, I, I didn't watch this one because I was doing Injustice at the right. time. So I, yeah, I definitely gotta go back I and mean, watch. I want to watch this just because, like, I just want to see what Dual Kevin's doing with Hawkeye. I think that's. Super I mean, cool. it's the same he's been doing. You know, he just yeah. he just has excellent space control and he's and zoning. he waits at the right mm-hmm. moments and mm-hmm. yeah, he's it's classic zoning, dude. Yeah. But very very strong. Yep. Uh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, Injustice seventh place. C L N Deoxys with uh, with. Uh, Deoxys 243. Yeah, so he actually could not make it on Sunday, unfortunately. Oh, he qualified that what on Saturday oh, okay, and then okay. had some family issue. Not exactly sure. Oh, Hopefully things are all right. Yeah, but no, he definitely. had to go home. Uh, he plays Blue Beetle, but uh, didn't get okay, shot. Okay, yeah. I hope everything's doing okay for you, sir. Uh, Buffalo as well with Sub Zero, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Sub Zero, I thought he was kind of weak, isn't he? Well, uh, that's what people thought at the start, but um, maybe not bad. Okay. Decent? Okay, okay, cool. Winnable, obviously top eightable. Yeah. Okay. Fifth place, Tsunami V with The Flash and F3DR Gross with Black Adam. Fourth place, DF Gurr with Adam. Uh, BXA in third place, BXA Burrito Voorhees with Swamp Thing, Atrocitus, Bane, and Brainiac. <laughs> did he really use them all in top eight? He sure did. Dang. Okay. Second place, Circa Forever King with Batman. And first place, this time not to be defeated by Forever King, Echo Fox, Sonic Fox with Fire. Yeah. He's doing Firestorm now. <laughs> yeah, just whatever. He, in fact, this is he, four majors in a row that he's won Injustice 2 with four different characters. Yeah. Uh-huh. Last awesome. ma- Winter Ball he won with uh, Michelangelo. Right, that's right. <laughs> I don't even remember who the ones were before because it just feels like it changes all the time. So, yeah, Firestorm. He, nobody challenged him. It was a blow up. Firestorm, like typically Sonic Fox will play weirdo characters that like typically aren't top tier. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, but pretty rarely. Uh, 
Firestorm's definitely top tier. Yeah. He's top tier. <laughs> and so there's like the there's like the top tier character plus Sonic Fox is just, you know, oh, right. well, that's it. Sonic Fox at this point, he's just like, roll just the dominant. dice and I'll pick this random select and I'll just beat Almost, you at this man. point in time, Almost. dude. Uh, Forever uh, King did well, of course. Burrito Voorhees is his brother, Forever King's brother, previously known as Forever King yeah, Jr. Yeah, I was about to say, that was Forever King Jr., right? And he didn't like being called Forever King Jr. Oh, for obvious reasons. For obvious yeah, reasons. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So he went with Burrito Voorhees. <laughs> He used to use Jason, right? So I asked him why. He said, I like burritos and I like Jason. <laughs> it's absolutely the worst name I've ever heard of in in the scene. I've I've never heard of a worse name. I've heard I've heard of names that I think are unremarkable. I think that happens all the time. Mm-hmm. It's just like whatever personal stories <laughs> in there. But it's it's like you've also actually heard, the worst. Like you've heard like fart boner, which is trolley. But there's nothing trolly about this. No, right? it's not yeah. even funny. It's just, right. <laughs> it's just horrible. It's just absolutely the worst. It's not. It, he started it um, last year, like maybe early last year or so. Uh, uh-huh. I'll help him out. I'll see if I can come up with a good Jason Voorhees burrito pun. Oh for man, him, so. people have been trying to help him out. <laughs> He's just. Uh, he he likes burritos and he likes Jason so. I like plenty of two things combinations, right. but uh, uh, I don't. Like I don't play as ass and like math, Thai, right? Thai food cell phone. I don't, it's, not, it's not what I do. <laughs> All right, that's you found your next. That's username. my name. You found your next username for a trolley account right there. Man, Thai man. food. I, Thai food cell phone. Actually, that's, that's genius. I got to remember. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. He, anyway, he played mostly Swamp Thing with occasional counter picks. Uh, okay. Swamp Thing is his main, and I think that character is really good. You know that, but unfortunately, he dies badly to Forever King's Batman. Oh, so okay, had to switch. okay, gotcha. And probably also just, you know, st- well, maybe a standard younger brother versus older brother problem. I, I, as well, I do too, think that's part of it. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. So uh, Gur, even though is I like, beat my older brother. <laughs> wow. All right. Um, <laughs> Gurr is probably like the fastest rising player in NRS. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He just he got. Uh, Second or third at the South by Southwest thing, he got like same at Winter Brawl and. By the yeah, way, which was with uh, Adam, awesome. the South by Southwest thing, which was literally just the day before final round. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Rip, he basically got two hours of sleep that whole weekend because he did the final, the, the South by Southwest thing, flew straight to final round, yeah. and then did the Tekken stuff. So, so. Pokémon okay. Tournament DX. Uh, seventh place, Ouroboro with uh, Gardevoir, uh, ZBJDA7 with Pikachu, uh, INC Roxo the Savage with Garchomp, fifth place also Bulomar with Decidueye and Aegis Slash, fourth place Scats with Charizard, third place Char with Charizard, second place Thanks a lot with Sceptile and Chandelier, and first place BXA Twixie with Aegis Slash. Cool. Yeah, obviously you were commentating, so you didn't get to see it. I was, this, that was right? during Injustice, yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, I still. It's probably the fighting game that I just know nothing about, and yeah. it makes me really sad. It's a, but one of the better ones. I never but, sat yeah. down to actually learn to play this. So, uh, DOA, uh, last round, fourth place, Destructive with Rig, SRM, Hoodle, Hoodless with Rig, Zach, Ein, and Pi. Second place, UGS, Black Moon Rising X with Leifang. First place, Crazy Steady with Leifang and Helena. And then plays Blue Central Fiction, top four, Elian with Jubei, The Arm with Rachel, Fame 96 with Susano, and Ponos Galileo with Lychee. I didn't even know Galileo was here. Yeah, he got, uh, I say, ninth at Dragon Ball, something like that. Oh, did he? Oh, 13th. Okay. Did I One miss that? Two. Okay, I guess I missed that. Yeah, he got 13th. Gari Reo, and Super Turbo, fourth place, GE Happy Medicine with Chun Li. Third place could be a setup with Ken Blanca Ryu. Second place, ST Revival Atari with Guile. First place, Comeback 386 with Balrog. And that was the Tournament of Legends qualifier, right? Yes. Uh, I talked to Atari. He's very, very sad. I talked with him, too, afterward. He was, yeah. very, because sure. he was just like, you wanted to be on the poster. Oh, I'm just going to say the same thing I said about Winter Balls. I should have entered this tournament. Dang! You think you would have won? I would have came very close. Well, you wouldn't have, because there would have been a Honda in your way. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the old roadblock. I would, I would have conceded that one. <laughs> I would have had to try my Ken counter pick, <laughs> yeah, which for sure. is not always the greatest thing there. Would have been the Zangief in your way. <laughs> 30, th- third strike, 
Uh, fourth place comeback as well uh, here, uh, 386 with Chun Li. Third place Kukai or Cookie with Elena Chun Li. Second place EG New York Chris G with Yang Necro Makoto Ryu Ken and Chun Li. Whatever. And first place Echo Fox Justin Wong with Chun Li. God, it was all Chun Li's. Jeez. That's, That's pretty good. wild. It's pretty unusual. Yeah. Very obviously the best character, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. dang. And then Alpha 2 was also played there. Okay. Yeah, because I know uh, Shin Blanca wanted, I think he wanted to play a, a tournament and body mm-hmm. a bunch of people. And also, I think he wanted to blow up Big E, but I don't know if Big E played it in or oh, not. Oh, so. wow, okay. But uh, fourth place, uh, PAG Virgo with Birdie. Uh, third place, Cookie with Rose. Second place, final round, Shin Blanca. Nice. With M. Bison and Ash. But first place was Echo Fox, Justin Wong with Rose. <laughs> yeah, you know. Oh uh, man, <laughs> that, that's really cool though that uh, he got sec- Larry got second place. Yeah, impressive. Yeah. yeah, I saw someone said that Justin Wong went to losers in Dragon Ball versus Galileo, but or Galileo I should say. And uh, but you know Justin hasn't really been. He's kind of trolling in that game because he plays the three Goku team yeah. and stuff. But he's like, I got like seventeenth place. Maybe I should play this game more. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> and you know what? I mean, honestly, having that MVC two background. Is similar to Goichi in the Melty Blood background. He's going to be able to block everything. Makes sense. Yeah. And he even told me that because before I was just like, I can't deal with pressure. It was one of my post online ranked matches tweets. You know, I'm always just kind of tweeting my progress. And yeah. I was like, so I think Vanish is like the best way to get out of there. And people are like, yeah, it can be baited, whatever. And I was like, at the levels that I'm playing at, it's great, right? But Justin was like, no, the game is all about blocking. It's like, just block everything until you find the way out. And in fact, that's what Goichi did to Sonic Fox a lot of times. And yeah. I think you were the one that pointed out that he would just wait for Dragon Rush so he could reset to neutral. Right. So he would just block, 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 block. Dragon Rush tech, neutral. Yep. So it was almost would have been better if Sonic Fox never Dragon yeah, Rushed it was, at all. It's wild. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, all right. There's the tournament. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Went well. A lot of uh, fun games. Oh, yeah. I think that what I enjoyed the most was. Um, Seeing how Dragon Ball went, not not just in the exhibition, but also in the tournament itself, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's really interesting to see where the game is now that we've had a big major. People are reevaluating where they feel the characters lie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we've all known that Adult Gohan is one of the best characters, but now it seems like maybe he's the best character. But you know, hard to start. Yeah. I feel like I feel like we'll. Need more time to know for sure. This game is definitely... The balance is starting to be felt. Yeah. I I described the character... The balance is really a balance of have and have nots. Because the system mechanics are pretty strong in this game. So it's like, do you have this system mechanic available to you? You know, like, because, like, Yamcha doesn't have mid air combo relaunches and he doesn't have knockdowns in the air. Like, he's just in this weird position, Right. right? So he's kind of in a weird situation and uh, like Ginyu, I was trying to use Ginyu for a while. If he doesn't get a true launcher, he doesn't get a. He can't finish an air combo into a super. He just can't. Like there's literally no way to do it. Not even if you tag into your friend super, it just doesn't work. Like he. So there's really a haves and have nots kind of thing. And so, I don't know. Like I'm curious how, if they're going to try to balance it more because it it is kind of balanced by lore a little bit like cell just has everything because as everyone's going to type in the chat he's perfect right so that's the that's the meme i guess with cell but you know um the 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 tears are really starting to find itself in that game like really really and there's definitely a top tier that's much stronger and it's becoming more mvc2 like a lot of people i've heard very like make a lot of parallels to mvc2 like these are the teams and it's going to be these right, five okay. characters and a mix of these five characters that are going to make the top, you know, the top tier, basically. So Okay. Well, it was yeah. really interesting to see how the top players played um, Vegeta because he's, he, he's played as a system mechanics character. Like, mm-hmm. he, like there's almost nothing he does that is unique to him. <laughs> he's, just, yeah. he's just, like, air dashing and going low sometimes, and that's... Yeah. You know, he'll occasionally do Cold Star from across the screen and then vanish after it, but like that's th- th- that's it. Like, there's nothing else there, and and yeah. that's but that's enough to make him like reasonable. Viable. Yeah, no, the only thing that he has is the uppercut. That's the only extra thing because I think it's only him and A Gohan who have a true mm. real uppercut, right? And of course, Goichi uses both of them. But like, there was a couple of times that he caught Sonic Fox. Uh, Goichi did with Vegeta because he did. 
Dragon Rush, and it gets an airborne opponent, that's usually, because there's no two H's to counter it, so usually you kind of have to respect that a mm. little bit. But he uppercut it into Vanish a bunch of times and stuff like that. So the uppercut was definitely the only Vegeta-specific thing that he was really doing well with Vegeta. But outside of that, yeah, everything else was just, I'm just going to beat you by playing the game. Right, the game, yeah. 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 Oh, definitely he's better than Silo. Oh, Team Gohan sure, has, a D, has a DP as well. Okay, okay. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, All right. that was final round. Very cool event. Had a lot of fun there.